Hello and welcome to this video. This video is a quick follow-up to my previous video on becoming a Business Central API superhero. It was pointed out by a colleague of mine that I might have skipped some points that are of interest. So I'm just going to quickly cover those. But remember, of course, no one is going to become an expert in APIs just from these blog posts and videos. It's more of an inspiration so you can get started. Anyway, let's get into it. The first thing that we are going to talk about is the expand ability. Now the expand ability is ability you have to get related tables inside your API pages results. To be able to expand your API, first you have to create a new API page. So here I have created a basic, very basic API page for my base unit of measure. As you can see, it's just a pretty standard API page. There's nothing special about this one. And then on my other page, which we created last time, the items, API items, all I've done is I've actually added this, uh, this as a part onto my existing page. Very much the same way as you would normally add any part to an existing page. The only difference here is that of course I have to add my identity name and identity set name. And then I, like anything else, I have a sublink. If we then try to run this in our postman, you see here, this is my normal request. If I send it, however, if I try to add my expand here, let's expand, I want to expand my base unit of measure and I press send. You can see now it actually also returns my base unit of measure. So this is a great way to to make some some things that might some people might want, but not necessarily always want. For example, it could be when you are getting out your sales headers. You might also want your sales lines. In some cases, in some cases you don't. But then you can add the sales lines as a part, and then you can expand it if you want. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the query. Now. This is just like any other query you can create in a Business Central. The only difference is, of course, this is query type API. Then you have to add the normal uh, parameters. And as you can see, the good thing here is, or the great thing is, that you can do like any other query, and then you can inside actually make a more complicated return set. Just like any normal query. The only downside to using a query is that it's a read-only transaction. So you cannot update the other way, but if you are only exposing data that has to be read, this is way much, way better in performance than a page. And if you query this just like any other, so we go over here, and just make sure that we have authenticated, and we press send, and you can see it just returns like anything else, but my uh, related table is already inside my data set here. So th that's the really big difference that th this will always return. You don't use the expand keyword because this is already part of the query that you're returning. So those are the kind of the things about uh, extending your data set. Besides that, I already talked a little bit about it. But it's very important this data access intent. As you can see, you have the read only, which of course means that you're going to read on a replica of the database. So you're not reading directly against a production database, but you're reading against a copy of the production database. So you're not in any way in affecting performance on your production. And beside that one, we have read and write. Now the read and write, of course, will let you both read and write your database. But then again, then you're also querying against your production database. So you have to make sure that when you're actually doing these API pages, should you make the data available only for reading, or are they also going to actually write something back to your database? Besides that, of course, as I also talked about, the OData field is very important. And as also said, system ID is the best practice to use. And the reason why it's a good idea to use the system ID is because it is a universal global ID, it's never going to change. 
So that way it's easy to always make sure that you always get the same, in this case, item. Besides that, we have these insert allowed, which of course means that you're allowed to insert on this page. The same goes for our modifier allowed and delete allowed. So those are of course something just like any other page. You have to make sure that you either, if you want someone to be able to maybe modify your records, if you don't want them to make new records, then you set modify allowed and the same with delete and insert respectively of what you want. Um, so that was pretty much it. I just wanted to uh, to talk about, uh, again, there might be a lot of things that I'm still not covering, but if you're going to be working with APIs a lot going forward and you will be interested in them, I do suggest that you grab yourself a copy of this book, the Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central API Reference. It's like the holy bible of working with APIs. So that was pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.